Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Daniela and today I have another charity shop book haul for you. Today I have mainly fiction, but there's also a couple of genres in there which I'm going to start with. First up, I have Crime Slash Thriller with some Karen Slaughter, and I picked up Genesis, Fractured, and Fallen. I'm pretty sure these are all part of a series. Hopefully this fills in some of that collection. I really need to update my Goodreads because I have not been tracking what I've been picking up. Next, I have a couple of indie romance books that I picked up. These are by Olivia Dead, who is an author that Illumicrate have worked with a couple of times. But these look like they were indie books, probably before she got picked up by a publisher. So I have Sweetest in the Gale, which is a collection of short stories, and Teach Me, which is a romance between two school teachers. I could not resist the covers of these. The covers are so cute. <laughs> especially this one, the way that they've done the lighting coming through the trees. Okay, I think the rest of these are either fiction or non-fiction. So we'll start off with the classic. I picked up North and Rabbit by Jane Austen. I recently read a graphic novel that was based off of this or heavily inspired by this novel and I really enjoyed the graphic novel and finding out that it was inspired by this made me really want to read this book. Next up I think this is a non-fiction and it's the 57 bus. I saw someone mention this on a YouTube video and within a week of watching that video I found it in the charity shop. All I know about this book is that it's based on a real event that happened and it is something to do with two teenagers on a bus and one of them sets the other on fire because of what they're wearing. That's all I know about it but it's based on something that actually happened so I'm really interested to read it. The back of the book says if it weren't for the 57 bus Richard and Sasha would never have met. What happens next is the story of race and discrimination but also of recovery, reconciliation and hope. It's about the good and bad in all of us and how your whole life can change in the time it takes to flick a cigarette lighter. And remarkably, it's all true. I'm getting goosebumps and feeling emotional just reading the back of this book. So I know this is going to be a hard read for me. And I'm probably going to cry. Next up, I think this is another nonfiction. It is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I'm pretty sure these books are memoirs based on her own experiences. I'm not 100% sure though, so don't quote me on that. All I've seen is good things about this. I'm really interested to try this one. Next, I picked up a physical copy of We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I don't really know anything about this one. I just know that it's one of those popular books that has been talked about a lot. The back of it says, We are liars, we are beautiful and privileged, we are cracked and broken. A tale of love and romance, a tale of tragedy. Which are lies, which is the truth? You decide. Next, I picked this one up. It just caught my eye and it just sounded interesting to me when I read the back of it. Never heard of it before, and that is Bear Mouth by Liz Hyder. The back of the book says it only takes one person to start a revolution. But it's spelt really weird, I've just noticed that. Anyway, it says life in Beartown is one of hard labour, the sunlit world above the mine a distant memory. Reward will come in the next life with the benevolence of the maker. Newt accepts everything, that is, until the mysterious Devlin arrives. Suddenly Newt starts to look at Bearmouth with a fresh perspective, questioning the system and setting in motion a chain of events that could destroy their entire world. In this powerful and brilliantly original debut novel, friendship creates strength, courage is hard won and hope is the path to freedom. This is so vague. I don't know if this is a fantasy book or if it's contemporary. It's not clear from the synopsis, so I'm very intrigued by this. Next, I picked up Heatwave by Victor Jestin. This is one of those books that was promoted a lot in Waterstones, I think, last year? It's really, really short. It's tiny, in fact, at just about 100 pages. And the back of it says, 17-year-old Leonard is on a camping holiday with his family in the south of France. On the final Friday of the trip, unable to sleep, Leonard goes for a walk and sees one of the boys from the campsite, Oscar, hanging from the rope of a playground swing. Leonard watches as the rope slowly strangles Oscar, then unable to think straight he buries the body in the sand and returns to his tent. The next- <laughs> this is the first time I've read the back of this book by the way. I just picked it up because I recognised it. The next day is the hottest in 17 years. Disoriented by the oppressive heat and distracted by his desire for a girl named Luce, Leonard spends the ensuing hours trying not to unravel. This sounds insane. 
but so interesting and it's really short this might have to be picked up very very soon i can't believe i picked that book up without reading the back the next book i picked up i was very unsure about whether i should pick it up or not and that is a beautiful world where are you by sally rooney the reason i was hesitant to pick this up is because i read normal people and I hated it. I was so annoyed when I finished that book. I actually threw that book across the garden. And I I like to look after my books. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little. I didn't throw it across. I threw it onto an airbed in the garden. But still, <laughs> I threw the book. I am going to give Sally Rooney one last chance. I think if I don't like this book, I'm just going to leave Sally Rooney. Maybe she's just not for me. If you didn't enjoy Normal People, but did enjoy this, let me know because that might make me want to read it. Next up, we picked up IQ84, books one and two by Murakami. We already had book three of this. That collection is now complete. Next, I picked up Wild by Cheryl Strayed. This is another non-fiction, autobiographical slash memoir. And this is about Cheryl's decision to make the journey to walk 1100 miles of the west coast of America alone with no experience of long distance hiking. I've heard good things about this. I haven't seen the film. Happy to read the book first and then watch the film, especially because I love Reese Witherspoon. Next I picked up Speak by Laurie Hals Anderson. I'm pretty sure this one is about sexual assault. That's all I know. I've been aware of it for a while. There is a graphic novel version as well, but I picked up the novel. Next we have another Haruki Murakami book and it is the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I love the cover of this one. I think it has some under the dust jacket as well. I don't know anything about this. I tried to just read the synopsis and I still can't tell you anything about it. I think this is just gonna have to be one of these that I try to read and if I don't get on with it, I don't get on with it. I picked up Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne and I managed to get this really cute edition and it's got the full colour map in and it has the colour illustrations in and I just remember reading oh I didn't know it had that it has this under the dust jacket as well printed directly on the book it's so cute I just really wanted to read Winnie the Pooh because I've seen like quotes for it online and I know that we used to have a big like collector's edition book of it when I was younger I just really I just want to revisit my childhood and read Winnie the Pooh Another memoir here I picked up. This is not a pity memoir by Abby Morgan. As far as I'm aware, this is about a woman who loses her husband slash the love of her life. And that's all I know. I've heard a couple of other people talk about this, about how like they're terrified to read it because they have a strong connection with their partner and reading this would just be terrifying. And I'm really intrigued by this. So I do want to try to give it a go. And last couple of books here, I have How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. I read The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I really enjoyed it. This one says, how many lifetimes does it take to learn how to live? Tom Hazard has a dangerous secret. He may look like an ordinary 41 year old history teacher, but he's been alive for centuries. From Elizabethan England to Jazz Age Paris, from New York to the South Seas, Tom has seen it all. As long as he keeps changing his identity, he can stay one step ahead of his past and stay alive. The only thing he must not do is fall in love. So we can guess what's gonna happen. <laughs> I also picked up Shuggy Burn by Douglas Stewart. The reason I picked this up is because it was recommended by Lucy Wood on YouTube. She said it was a very good story and I am intrigued. This is based in Scotland and it says laying bare the ruthlessness of poverty, the limits of love and the hollowness of pride. Shuggy Burn is a blistering and heartbreaking debut from a remarkable new writer. And lastly, I picked up Crossfire by Mallory Blackman, which I think think is the only one i needed to complete the series that is everything i have for today did you find any books that you were interested in anything new that you hadn't heard of that you think you might want to try let me know in the comments and if you've read any of them let me know what you thought of them but no spoilers please as always if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i will see you next time Fade to grey as you fade away yeah.